Seven o'clock. Okay. I'm gonna <coughs> call the Village of Yellow Springs Planning Commission to order. Um, can you call the roll, please? I can indeed. Pelzel. Here. Doden. Here. Stiles. Here. McQueen. Here. Donnell. Here. Also present are Planning Administrator Dee Swinger and Solicitor Chris Conard. Um, so uh, we're going to look over our minutes and then hear any communications that the Commission has received. Hear a council report from Marianne, Marianne on anything that's relevant to us. Um, then we'll open it up to citizens comments where you can discuss anything that's not on the agenda. Um, and then we have two public hearings, a uh, conditional use application that we're revisiting um, for the pocket neighborhood development on 117 East North College Street. Um, Antioch College is the um, applicant. Um, and then a conditional use application for a professional office at 1030 Xenia Avenue. Um, Charmaine Lynch is the applicant. Um, and then we will discuss some old business. We're working on the comprehensive land use plan update, any new business, agenda planning, and that'll be it. So first of all, um, review of the minutes from September 10th, 2018. Um, does every, anyone have any changes for um, page one? Well, I do because clearly I didn't update the date, so I will do that. Okay, it should oh. be September 10th. the 10th instead of August 13th. Correct. Um, page two, page three, page four. Page five, page six, page seven, page eight. I, I did have, I, I wasn't at the meeting, but I did have a question. Mm -hmm. In the middle it says amend chapter 1260.03 parking and storage, but then it goes on. I wasn't sure that what followed that was that. Um, um, which, which chapter is that? What page? Um, on seven. Seven, seven. Right in the middle, it says amend chapter 1260. Yep. Oh, this is totally different. Um, Point off. Oh, no, it's here. We're talking about down there. You got to keep going. This is not the same. My seven is not the same as yours. Okay, wait a minute. I'm going to go wrong page. Seven. Your seven. Sorry, sorry. There's, there's more than one. So there we go. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Are we all good on the sevens? Yes. So, okay. twelve sixty oh three. Just keep reading. It, it's eternal. That particular section. Keep going until you get to this section. It's on the next page. It's a question. So, so it does refer. It's just. Yeah. There are two things okay. in the same. So it's just right. vast. And a lot of it got changed. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, eight, nine, and ten. Can I go back to one? Yeah. Should it be built on the review of agenda? Should we build cell instead of building? Should be what? I Should thought that was weird too. Yeah. But did you? Yeah. Uh, instead of review of ad agenda, it should be I reviewed the agenda tonight. Yeah. Uh, oh, because it's from the time. Frank. Because the previous time. Yep. Yeah. These are September's. Yep. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I move we approve the minutes of August 10th, September. 2018. September. <laughs> no, the minutes of. Oh, no, September. September, you're right. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. September. That was my little error there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting you off to a really bad foot right here, so Second. I'm, 
Excellent. Mm. Call them. You can just voice vote it. Oh, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll abstain since I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. All right. Um, do we have any communications other than what we're hearing tonight? No. Um, Mary Ann, council report. Council? Yeah. Uh, so last uh, September, the 20th, I think of September, we had a <coughs> meeting and some of the people sitting here were at that meeting to talk about the Bowen report on suggested goals, housing goals. I think Denise, <coughs> Susan, and Ted. Yeah, I think you were there. And um, the, we had, I don't know, there were probably about 20 people there mm -hmm. all together. Yeah. And uh, we wanted, the housing board wanted to get feedback on Bowen's presentation about housing goals. And I thought it was a very um, rich discussion in which people had comments on the number and number of goals. Monica was there too, yeah. Um, as well as thoughts about how we should be looking at housing types, costs, how we might work together. A, a lot of discussion was had. So our board is meeting tomorrow morning. We're going to write up something to go to council to get feedback from council and then once that happens I'll send that report to planning commission and I, I would say that I anticipate that sometime pretty soon planning commission would be getting involved in this process and maybe at the next planning commission meeting would be a good time to talk about that okay all right put that on agenda planning yeah <clears throat> um, all right. Um, are there any citizens comments that don't address either of the conditional use applications today? All right. Hearing none. Um, do I need to open that officially and close it officially? You may want to first hear from Denise and then see if council has questions, or oh, sorry, planning commission has, council, has questions for her and then Public oh, I was talking about oh, citizens' just, comments. Just, 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 Am I yeah. supposed to like oh, do no, that officially? Yeah, no, okay. Um, thank you. I think I ask that every time. Um, okay, so um, Denise, can you give sure. us a sure? A so we are uh, <clears throat> here here again to um, hear the conditional use hearing. Um, this <clears throat> is for an eight-unit uh, pocket neighborhood at uh, 117 East uh, North College Street. Um, this uh, property was reviewed previously by uh, council or uh, by planning commission. Um, there was some <clears throat> questions relating to um, stormwater calculations um, as far as uh, some of the site plan details which have been uh, added to this uh, updated in this report. Um, specifically, um, anything highlighted in bold was an, was an additional, um, either a condition or something that has been since updated uh, because we have this time frame allowed. Um, so if we want to, would you prefer to just discuss the um, updates and, and go through that? Okay, so I tried to I reviewed the site plan and um, there were some changes that were made based on Planning Commission's um, suggestions, specifically um, the suggestion about the, um, the rain garden and the bioswale on the um, uh, east side of the property. Uh, it is, uh, they removed one of the rain gardens towards the back um, near where that, the, the um, waste receptacles had previously been located. Mm -hmm. um, they removed that rain, rain garden and, and pushed the waste receptacles to the side there a bit um, and then op made that bioswale a little larger. Uh, Denise, and is that reflected in? It's reflected in the new site plan. Okay. And, and um, <clears throat> 
Can you tell us which one? Because ours are so small, I have a hard yeah, time um, reading them. Yeah, what that was specifically. Um, yeah, it was L. The C O O four. C O four. Maybe O four. Let me see. Yeah, you can see it better and see the grading and utility plan. It's probably actually the rain garden um, also shows its oh, removal. C O O five. Okay, you can see that. They also did add um, specific language, I mean, uh, dimensions were added to the common space area, which is also in the landscape L101 and the A101 document, uh, where they didn't have that before as far as uh, the width on the plaza. They put in those dimensions as well. Um, As far as the alleyway, um, I did have uh, the public works director go out with me, and um, although you could probably do um, some parallel parking on the on the alleyway running uh, parallel with Zena Avenue, it just is too um, narrow of an area. If we did have a runky truck try to go through, and then there's a curb and there's all kinds of hanging utility wiring and the 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 location at Whiteman Street is so narrow that um, I think that's probably why Colin Altman um, chose to have the um, fire lane on East Livermore because there just isn't access for the fire trucks as well. Um, if at some point, uh, public works director said, if at some point Antioch wants to do something with that alleyway at the back, especially with the, where the parking area is for access, some for vehicles or whatever that direction, we'd have to, you'd have to come and meet with the public works director and we'll look at putting that into the budget at some point. But for right now, it was just prohibitive. <clears throat> well, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, if it is the desire of planning commission and council to restore alleys as a policy, which I think is pretty well established. I I don't know that for sure. I, I know it's the desire of council to not um, uh, to not vacate anymore. Right. But as far as restoration, I don't think they've talked yeah, about yeah. that. I don't, for I don't think we've had. I mean, we've talked about that in connection with broadband access, but I don't think council has taken a stand on it. Yeah. Yeah, well, so. then I think you know, outside of this particular application, I think that we should really bring that up because I have, you know, I mean, in my mind, the idea that we have um, residences on Xenia Avenue that have to take, according to this, if Runke can't go down that alley to pick up their trash, then they're hauling it up to Xenia Avenue. And you have an alley which sole purpose it is for utility vehicles and service vehicles. and. You know, so the intent would be for Planning Commission to take every opportunity for new development to, in fact, bring those alley back to a service level. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good planning. That's, that's what we should be thinking about in every application. And to just say, well, we'll get to it later just means the can got kicked down the road for another 10 years. Well, yeah, okay. Um, I guess. But from the perspective of not having it in the budget, having not planned for it, if you're, if, I agree. If it's something we want to start planning for, absolutely. But it isn't something we can do right now. It's not. It's not something where we just be able to throw some gravel down. It is a complete restoration. I mean, there you'd have to basically make a complete alley again because it's been reclaimed by nature. I have photos of it actually. If you'd like well, to I see. know the one that's run parallel to. North College. Yeah. But the one that runs perpendicular to North College. It's gone too. This is a picture of the perpendicular one. It's gone. It only, it only, um, you want to pass that? Yeah, it's very tight, I think, between. It only has, it only has gravel at this end 
where there is actually a dumpster. But then if you go further back towards that last, that area there, it's all green. Okay. Yeah, so, but I, I, I don't disagree with that. I think Do that you think it would be so helpful for Planning Commission to recommend to Council to put that in um, next year's well, we, and, and it really, it should be part of our transportation, active transportation yes. plan. Yeah. 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 You well, know, maybe. and it's part of, you know, tree trimming. You know, if there's utilities running down that alley, there's a tree trimming plan at some point to take those limbs out. Well, there's a service vehicle right there. You yeah. know, so I'm just, you know, and if the wires are too low, well, duh. You know, I mean, it's our utility. You know, things yeah. like that. Right yeah, and some of those, just, some of those wires were not ours, but yeah, I mean, it would you'd have to go back to the people and do that. Um, there's, you'd have to look at the alleyway uh, entrance at Whiteman. It was pretty narrow. I don't know with cars parking on the street on Whiteman how a truck would be able to pull it out and then turn. I don't know. It but just it, didn't look. It could go from North College up and then <coughs> turn east and not and not go through all the way and that house that's on the corner of whiteman and Zenia avenue they probably put their garbage out on to whiteman anyway so it would only be that house. i mean if you, you know if at some point you did do a restoration you could come running across the north side and then turning and going back down on to, to east mm -hmm. north college i just don't know if you'd ever be able to do whiteman because of the location of the two houses yeah Then we ought to recommend that the Whiteman Alley be vacated and the other one be restored. Okay. You know, at least address it. Yeah. You know, we have an applicant. Well, that's and I think completely we can in our comp plan. Absolutely, I think we can address it. And we can do that in the comprehensive plan, and as you said, after the active transportation plan. I mean, I, I don't know if alleys were even considered in the active transportation plan, frankly. Um, and I don't know. All I know is I had someone that came a while back that wanted to vacate an alley, and it was at that point that council raised the issue of vacating alleys because of future, future walkability. Mm -hmm. um, and that was it. That, you know, they went ahead and, and vacated that particular one but they didn't want to see any more coming. And so when people have brought that to me before, unless it is clearly something that you know is, it has a dead end, it isn't gonna be of any use, I tell people that you're probably not gonna be able to get it to pass council. And, um, and but it's some, you know, putting a pin in it pretty much is what happened. Um, so like I a- I know when we rewrote the zoning code, it was discussed at length about maintaining those the alleyways you know and trying to bring them back and even to the point of some planning district adding alleys you know i mean considering yeah. that and you know it's never it's always stuck with me yeah there are a few that have been semi-maintained um and i know that they're i know that um streets is you know trying to keep at least those that haven't been reclaimed by the earth, um, keeping them clear. And I know letters have been sent out, um, actually from the village manager, having people trim back their bushes and so that their people can have access. But <clears throat> it is a, uh, it's a concern. It, it is a, it is something we should really discuss in more detail. Okay. Can we put that uh, on the agenda for um, sure. the comprehensive land use plan? discussion later okay so um, then let's see the rest of that um, they did go ahead and um, add the information that was requested I'm going to just go to my report instead of trying to flip through this because I had it all outlined for you. Did everybody receive that report? I think it's at the back. Are you talking about Exhibit 1? This? 
Is yes. it the yes. one at the very back? At the very yes. back, right yes. before yep. the yep. conditional use. Um, yes. So. <clears throat> Uh, it did not end up in your packet because um, there was a glitch with, I guess, the Everything. PDFs. We've been having computer issues. But Exhibit IA, which is on your table, um, shows we did request um, that as part of the ordinance by council that the removal of the asphalt on the adjacent property be added to that uh, rezoning request. So that was added and council did pass the rezoning. I think it's what second or second paragraph. A whereas. So council did take that recommendation. Um, and just to be clear, that's the um, lot right uh, to the east of the lot that we're talking about. That old um, gravelly um, parking lot will be the removed of a parking lot yeah yeah when the construction happens or actually what we talked about was allowing that to be a staging area yeah that's yeah. in your yeah. minutes too yeah and then um <clears throat> a couple of the other things uh were going to happen as we get down the road a little bit further once we get the construction plans uh, the public works director will want to review those um, to be able to, as well as our uh, village uh, contracted engineer for the stormwater calculations. Um, the other condition, the site plan, um, they did go page A501A and A502A. They did show more detail regarding elevations, the gutters and downspouts, and their connection to the rain barrels. Um, I had it originally as, as stormwater drainage areas um, so and again that's going to be re reviewed by engineering as well and then page C 003 um, they did place identifying markers on the waste receptacle the, an ADA parking sign the bollard lights the six inch curb and the curb cuts for the stormwater that was so you could see it a little bit better than what the previous site plan had and as I mentioned previously the um, page C's <clears throat> 005 shows the removal of one of those rain gardens. I think that was a suggestion, perhaps, Ted, you had said something about that, and they relocated the under drain directly to that enlarged bioswale. Um, can you quickly go over the conditions um, not the conditions, but the things that we sort of gave, we allowed for, like the parking, you know, the things that we reviewed just so that we're redoing this properly? Uh, I mean, well, we <coughs> reviewed everything on the site plan, um, which, you know, included um, the required parking spaces, um, the um, setback requirements, the lot coverage requirements, everything uh, followed uh, residential C, which is high density residential. Um, and uh, everything, all of the setback requirements, um, the lot coverage requirements, parking requirements were all met by this design. Um, they have more than a more than what was required of uh, landscaping um, they did they were required for the for 10 parking spaces to have uh, an island with two trees which they did put that into the parking lot area so er, all of that met the requirements I think the the biggest concern that Planning Commission and staff has is just the 
because of the density, we want to make sure that the stormwater is managed and there isn't that it does not go onto neighboring properties. And there was a report. There was a preliminary report, um, but that has to really ha that can't really happen until more construction, the construction plans are completed. So um, that was one of the conditions that wow. Antioch College, when the construction plans are ready, that will come back to our public works director and he'll have our contracted engineer calculate those stormwater calculations to make sure that they are going to work for what. And I think an exception was made, I don't know if it was an exception, but about the parking lots to allow two foot at the edge to be a, a permeable that surface was actually, area. That was a, something that is allowed in the zoning code that it was already in the parking lot code that you can do that if you have that bumper and then you can oh, have that okay. two foot edge. What isn't in the zoning code was the um, fact that it wasn't going to be asphalted. Mm -hmm. So, but that was something we were okay with because there is, you know, allowable for permeable uh, materials. Are there any more any questions more? on the site plan review? Questions from commission? Well, I have some questions that aren't actually part of the site plan. Let, let me just say what they are and then we can. One question is, are these prop, properties going to, is this going to be a leasehold estate or are people going to own the land? Um, are, is this, are these condos or do they totally own the units? And I was reading the uh, Homeowners Association documents and I don't know whether that's something we want to weigh in on, but I had some comments about that. So I don't know if any of that's appropriate Chris, now. you want to answer that question about? Well, the, the way that the covenants were, the way the covenants were uh, revised would indicate that the, it would be a leasehold estate, but that's only in the draft. So I don't know the mechanics of actually how that will work, what the duration is, uh, whether that would be functionally a leasehold for life, um, how the transfer of the property would occur. 99 year lease. Okay. Renewable. And then transferable by the owner to the of next that owner? leasehold interest. I'm not sure about that. That's generally how it's done. And then is, are these condos or do they own the whole unit? Condos. Can you come up to the mic to say that? Condo association. The condos and a 99 year lease. Okay. So then is the homeowners association responsible for maintenance of the outside of all the units, the siding and a Yes. Thanks. And, and technically we, you know, we want the homeowners association, correct me if I'm wrong, we want that, we want to see that agreement and, and we're going to um, sign off on it just to protect the interest of the village in the deal, right? Yeah, yes, there were two parts to the conditions in our discussion. Uh, one is that uh, <coughs> we would be able to review that document before it was recorded. And then two, uh, the, before the association could be terminated, it would require village approval. Uh, the concern that, that I have is, is that there could be a unilateral effort by the homeowners association to dissolve the entity and then what? in you know one thinks about what all of those reasons could be and I can think of a number of, of them but um, often when that happens chaos ensues <laughs> and we want to we want to know what we're getting into um, and although we won't know now in other words it's a future piece if something happens we want to be at the table to have a discussion about how that could impact the village because the demise of that homeowners association, uh, owners association, which has cost sharing for all of that maintenance, common areas, etc. Yeah. So, so, do we comment on those covenants now, or some other time, or did it already happen? Well, the, the 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 covenants as they exist now are purely draft. 
Uh, I think that there's some other, I won't speak for Antioch, but the way I read these is that there's, there's still some ongoing tweaking that needs to go on. Uh, the concept is very well evolved, but. So, so do, if we had comments, do we do that now or wait? I think if you have comment, general comments or questions about the covenants, you should go ahead and ask them now. So is that. But, but it's still in but recognizing it's still in draft form and the village. Commission, it would come back to the, to the village. Staff, legal. right, staff. And. <clears throat> Did you see the conditions, covenants, um, the questions that were already posed by Planning Commission? There well, were, I think I read everything that was sent there out. There was um, on number six of my report, um, which was Exhibit I on the second page. We had um, right at the back. Oh, back up here. Yeah, we basically had seven oh, yes, items that. that we were concerned about. And um, yeah. all of the B, C, D, E, F, and G were addressed. Um, I wasn't able to find, uh, that, although they did put in there that um, the homeowners associated cannot be terminated without approval by the village of Springs. That is in there. They, I couldn't find where final approval of these were to be given by the village. As far as when you, whenever you're done tweaking, we want to be able to see that. So I guess, yeah, I think that's just kind of one of those understood things that doesn't really need to be in the document, but it'll be in the conditional letter. <laughs> um, and of course, the future phase. That is something that is going to have to be in the letter and not actually in the covenants. Well, I have three comments in okay. there, very quick. Um, and the pages aren't exactly numbered, but on number 1.27, it talks about clotheslines not being allowed. Given that this is supposed to be in a sustainable development, I strongly suggest that there be some place on the site, surely there's a place where there could be common clotheslines or something. Uh, and then the next page on 1.3 under repairs, it only refers to his rather than his and her, uh, you, only using the male pronoun. That's just sort of a could just be type, there typo or his and, and yeah, hers. I'm and then that. on section 11, attendance by others at the b meetings, it says no owner other than a director may attend or participate in any discussion or deliberation of a meeting of the board of directors unless the board expressly authorizes that owner to attend or participate. I don't know if that's normal, but that seems uh, rather, I would think that if I were an owner in this association, I'd want to be able to attend the meetings of the board of directors. The, the as, a, as, a, as a right. The way the covenants as I read them are that they're all, and they're called occupy, people who occupy oh. are on the homeowners. Yeah. They're all considered so they're, they're all They're directors. already on the board, a, one, one person. So oh, okay, I thought it was a board of three people. That's initially. Okay, got it. Then when all okay. the units are, are, are transferred. Okay. Um, do we want to open up a public hearing? Okay. If there are no more comments from the board at this time, um, the commission at this time, I'm going to open up for uh, public, the public hearing for public comments on this um, conditional use application. Come up, state your name, please. My name is Patricia Brown, and I just want to reiterate that though these CCRs are a draft, there's still significant problems in those CCRs that need to be addressed um, before we, as purchasers, would be happy with it. And uh, part of it is um, that the 99-year lease must be in for each person that it is sold to, and that's the law in of the condo law, uh, as is written in the state of Ohio. So if they do not do that, it does not follow the law. <clears throat> there are other things 
in the CCRs that do not follow the law of Ohio that protects the uh, persons who are purchasers and those need to be addressed and we are coming up with those lists to put in there. Um, the other thing that needs to be addressed is because there will be at least two rentals and there's a possibility of four according to the pocket neighborhood. We need to address the fact that with eight houses, if you do not address renters as having irrevocable proxies to be able to both vote as well as be board members, you are significantly um, limiting the ability to have a homeowners association. So I think those things absolutely need to be in there and there's probably others as well. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, for your support. I just want to also add that the homeowner, uh, potential homeowners have all received the CCRs and we are um, soliciting feedback and planning to have a meeting soon. So um, that's not the first time we've heard that feedback and we look forward to receiving more feedback from them. Thank you. How many potential homeowners do you have identified at this time? Uh, six. Okay. Out of eight. Is it required that two units are rentals? No. By, not by us. No, or, no, okay. our, no, our pocket neighborhood development says that you can't have more than 50%. You can't have more than 50%. But then this one, it stated that they were all, it didn't say there were any rentals. So are there going to be rentals? Thank you for coming up. Oh, sure. So the plan, uh, the working draft right now is that there will be um, a rental that um, donors will help to purchase and subsidize the home so that it can become permanently affordable and then that will be a rental for um, someone here in the community and then um, hopefully we'll keep the plan is to keep that permanently affordable going forward. Mm -hmm. um, the second rental um, is, the second rental is, there's two. Right now, plan. Yes. Do you want to speak to that? Well, um, well I guess I can at this point. I, I was planning on donating after I buy the house that I'm going to be living in. I'm planning to donate to Tania College, and because um, I'm going to, I want to donate it up front for various reasons. I will donate it and then rent it. And then what Anna College does with that in the future is up to them. I guess I have another question now. With the um, homeowner regulations then, the articles of, I guess, of incorporation, are the renters then board members represented on it? Or is it the <clears throat> because the owner would be either this group, group of donors or Antioch College. So how about the people that are living there? Are they considered board members? Do you want to answer that or you want me to? I think. Okay. So at the moment, the draft um, does not say that they can be, but we are looking at ways where we can have a proxy, where the owner would identify a proxy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, if there are no other uh, comments from the community, I'm going to close the public hearing, bring it back up to the board. Um, do we want to discuss further? Are we ready to make a motion? I'm confused really because I, in our last meeting, we had a lot of dialogue, a lot of conversation, a lot of conditions, a lot of public hearing. And is that discussion now null and void, or is it just for the record that we had a meeting for this stuff? And how does that transfer to this particular meeting? <coughs> and how does that then translate into a? As far as <coughs> as far as the conditions that all of the conditions that came out of the last meeting, I put into that report. So they're now part of the public record yeah I mean they, they, these are the conditions that they had to fulfill and and 
um, that's what they they've actually fulfilled quite a few of them in this mo past month so anything that they didn't complete gets carried over and, and it's going to be a part of the conditions that they will sign off on with staff. Okay. So I'm thinking the exhibit one. Yeah, and exhibit, yeah, I. So, I, I mean, there was a lot of discussion. It condensed itself down into the, actually being those, those, those conditions. I mean, is there something you think that was missing or? Well, no, I'm no. just, you know, it, it's just a procedural thing in my brain that yeah. doesn't translate into the to this meeting that is now a, a public hearing for to approve something that, although we approved it before, mm -hmm. I don't know what happens to that. Does it go into the ether and go away? Well, Ted, I think that it, it, to the extent that, that you, to address your concern in an abundance of caution, I, I might suggest that while the minutes from were approved and adopted, that I might, in an abundance of caution, I'm not sure that we have to do it, but you could move to have the minutes from the last hearing be included in the record today okay. for this hearing. I like that. I think that that would be prudent. Okay. And then the other one is, um, with due respect to Mary Ann, when Lisa was here, Lisa made comments, you know, so now we have, instead of five, we're really dealing with six votes. Well, so, we're, so are we, how are we doing? Well, this is a, this is the hearing that approves it, and she's been here. Okay. But did you vote to approve it the last? Mm -hmm. Yes. But so it, then I, I, I probably should but, not vote. Well, but that's nullified, right? Well. No. Yes, but but the the hearing was re-noticed. So th this is actually going to be the official hearing that determines how this project would go forward if approved by the body. Procedurally, it's it's a little clunky, but for a lot of reasons, it made more sense to hold the second hearing, essentially start the process over. Okay. So, in my view, with a clean slate, Marianne can appropriately participate uh, and vote as the representative of the council. Uh, certainly any comments that Lisa may have had would have been, I think that the way you look at that last hearing is almost that was more of an informational hearing for the body now. Yeah. Having taken, included that conversation in today's meeting as referenced by the, what will be the motion to include those meeting minutes into this hearing. Citizens' concerns have been addressed. Uh, questions of the body have been addressed. Um, I think that there's a comprehensive record upon which a decision can be made. Okay, so the vote that we took, should we void that or is it just void? I, I think it's just void because... Because we didn't notice it properly. Right, correct. And so I, I think that this vote would supersede that original vote. I don't know, Judy, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, two. One is that... Um, it seems apparent that Mary Ann has informed herself as to the proceedings of the last Planning Commission meeting, which is her responsibility if she steps in having not been present at a first hearing or at a portion of a hearing. And if, as long as she has done that, she can be seated, she can vote, she can do everything at the table with the rest of you. So that, that's clean. Not a problem unless she feels like, gee, you know, I don't feel comfortable, and then she can abstain. No, that's, I don't want to lose the vote. That, I mean, that can go either way. But, um, you know, as far as just procedurally making sure that all the pieces are in order, um, you could um, say something in the motion to include all conditions which were identified at the previous meeting of planning condition and anything you may have added tonight in a motion so that you're essentially repeating that. I mean, that they, again, the abundance of caution issue, but I think that that would cover it. Would that the, make sense? The, the phrasing in the motion depends on really how, how you want to phrase it today, and then we can go back and then figure out how to include what we did right. last time. So it sounds yeah. like we need two separate motions. Well, I would start with yeah. making the record the minutes from the last meeting part of this. 
you know, that to me, because I think that that dialogue was really in depth. Yeah. And, you know, we had more representatives here. We had more public here. I don't want to lose that for the record. Do mm -hmm. you want to make that motion? Yeah, I'll make that motion that we um, adopt the minutes of the last meeting. Hearing. Hearing. Oh. Um, well, no, because it, was it wasn't a hearing. hearing. Yeah, yeah, it was a meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. The discussion of just this issue, though. It, it, it incorporate by reference and adopt the, the, the minutes of the, the public hearing in September as it relates to the Antioch Pocket neighborhood development. Okay. Can you cut? Like you, that. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I, in my view, what people said is what people said. The minutes reflect that, and I think that council or the, the planning commission has already said that is an accurate recollection of the events that occurred at that discussion. I'll second it. You can. So the, the minutes of the uh, September tenth. Um, public hearing plan and planning commission meeting are, I'm sorry, I missed the last On part. The Antioch PNG right, PNG. are incorporated as, I missed the last part of what they are. Are incorporated into today's hearing. Okay, 9, 10, 8, 18 here. And, con and shall be considered by planning commission. part of the record shall be made part of the record sorry sorry I never learned shorthand uh, record okay got it and we have a second by McQueen <coughs> Pelzel yes Stiles yes McQueen yes Doden yes Donnell yes okay well we can't go on to the we have to have another motion yeah. to approve right, okay. yes or not approved. Yeah. Um, uh, I move to approve the conditional use application with the conditions um, that we stated at our <coughs> September 10th meeting, some of which have been um, completed and some of which haven't. Is there another, any other commit? Conditions that we wanted to add today? No. What? So are you, are you referring to the conditions that are contained in the staff report? Right. Yes. Bottom of page 13. There, there are conditions one through five, and then conditions, covenants, and restrictions, the, the CCR piece in number six. Yes. A yeah. through G. And does that include number seven as well? Is that a condition? Yes. Yes. Do I have a second? I second it. Chris, is that clear enough? The, if you want to. Let's see, let's see that clear. Let's see. I think that for, for the minutes that given a number of conditions, if Denise could read through them and to formally put them in the record would make sense. Okay. Well, I think that at this point, it's uh, condition number two, consult with fire chief to see if the alley can be utilized for one of the fire lanes. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know if I didn't really talk to him, but we're not really in a position, so we we'll, won't we'll have that. So condition number three, the construct construction drawings to be reviewed by the Public Works Director prior to at the same time the plans are submitted to Green County Building Regulations be included for condition number four, final stormwater calculations provided upon completion of construction plans and reviewed by the village's en engineer. And then under conditions and uh, covenants and restrictions, number A, um, which was final approval of CCNRs to be given by the village. And number seven, the future phase um, when they when Antioch College is ready to do something across the street to um, work with the Village of Yellow Springs on a street, streetscape design aesthetic. 
those are carryovers. So those are the conditions that I add to my motion to approve. And you. Those, this one's been taken care of, this one. Well, here's what I suggest. I suggest that for purposes of the record, that for 6A, you, you, that they are all still conditions, okay. even though they've been taken care of. Okay. Because yes. that was the intention. Okay. Well, and I, I'd include them to condition five of the site plan to show elevations, because if, right. if Johnny needs more after his review, you're, you've still got that condition attached. So then all the conditions I in would, exhibit I then yes. are remain. Yeah. That's Good. fine. Yeah. Okay. As stated. Give it I. Okay. Ready for roll call? Oops. Um. There was. Do you have something? No. Oh, okay. No. All right. Okay. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Styles. Yes. Donnell. Yes. Doden. Yes. Tozo. Yes. All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming to the <coughs> conditional use application from 17 East North College Street, version two. Um, take two. Uh, we move on to the conditional use application, the professional office at 1030 Xenia Avenue. Um, Thank you everyone for being so patient. Um, can you give us a draft yeah. of the staff report? Yeah. Um, I, I'm, let's wait a second. I know um, staff is excited to see that something is finally happening with that building. It has been vacant for a number of years. Um, this is the building that's located at the corner of Xenia Avenue and East Herman Street or West Herman Street. Um, this uh, property um, had been the former location of Dr. Russell um, a dentist um, who had practiced in Yellow Springs for 40 plus years. He used to be over on the property of Vernay um, many, many years before, <laughs> um, which is now, now just uh, all grass over there and on uh, Dayton Street. And then he, he built this a very nice building um, and um, and then passed away. So um, Char Charmaine uh, Lynch is here tonight. She is the owner of Healing Care Acupuncture. She has her business currently in the Humanist Building. Is that correct? Yes. And she has purchased um, the property and uh, because it is a change of use, uh, it's no longer a dentist office and is a professional office, it does require a conditional use hearing. In, in reviewing all of the um, requirements uh, as far as parking goes, um, uh, the property has the available parking spaces needed. Her practice um, is pretty low impact. Um, it's going to be by appointment only. Um, she'll have office hours Monday through Saturday. She has a range of between 9 and 5, but some of those days will be, you know, half that time. Um, and um, I there isn't any, uh, the photo that I had uh, was from like 2012, yeah, 2012. So a lot of the stripes on the parking spaces have faded since then, and there's not any uh, labeling of ADA. So I'm assuming that will probably be taken care of. That will be something that we'll want to hear from Ms. Lynch on. And then, um, I did want to point out to the Planning Commission that um, in Residential C, Den doc dentist office are not a allowed. I don't know why. It's just in it's just, huh? Oh, wow. Does it specifically say they're not allowed? It says medical and dental offices, and it's blank. There's no P, no C on it. No uh -huh. permitted or conditional. Yeah, hmm. so I thought well, that was a good one. They're actually considered a professional office. Um, so office. I don't know why they had it as its own category in there. We, it's something, again, it's probably a text amendment. Yeah. Well, I, I just, I, I would eliminate that 
and just because consider professional. it professional? Yes. Okay. That's how the building code addresses it. When um, Dr. Russell came forward, it was at that time done as a professional office. So yeah. somehow that got added in uh, medical wow. and dental, and there's still professional offices, but I was just really surprised to see that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'll, we'll do that as a text amendment in the future here. Yeah. I mean, if it seems to me that if it's blank, it doesn't have any application anyway. You can take it out. Right. So we don't even need to review it, do we? You can just eliminate it. Oh, that's it. true. Well, no, uh, no it, because if it's know. absent from we should, the zoning code, we it is not say permitted. So if that line exists in the zoning code and it is not given condition or permitted, it's not permitted. That's no. that's the way the zoning code is. And it may yeah, be, if it's blank, yeah, it right. means it's not permitted. And it could mean that it could be permitted somewhere else, but like, right. but, but, there, but it's not permitted in, in RC. And even though that, I don't know if that had been changed anyway. It's odd. I mean, that's where they belong yeah. in RC. Right. All the way up and down Dini Avenue and Dayton Street. You know, <laughs> the whole idea. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. So, but it is a professional office, and that's what we um, yeah. uh, did the public hearing on. So, um, and we're doing it again. Well, yeah, because it was a change of use. It's no longer going to be a dentist office. So, um, hmm. but but if it's a, if the professional office is the listing, is it really a change of use? In my mind, it was because me, because dental offices were listed, oh. so that's where it ha I came in. I had a conflict with that one. So, and yeah. listed as not permitted. I mean, even no, if we're going to change it, it's still like eliminated as or it, are in, added into under professional offices. Uh, as it stands now, it's not that. permitted. Instead of instead of zoning saying that it is a change of use. You don't want to say that because the building department sees change of use as a designation. Now they've got to upgrade significantly to that building. So it's not a change of use as a professional office. It's just included in the category of or some statement like that without yeah. changing use. Yeah. It's just we, but we'll still need to do a conditional use hearing or no? Yeah, I mean, it's a yeah. new yeah. owner. Okay. And it's a repurpose of the, you know, there's no change of use in the building use. Okay. But it's still a conditional use because it's a new owner. So issue it as a general permit rather than a change of use permit. Yes. Okay. We don't want you to get in trouble. <laughs> So, does anybody have any questions for the applicant? The only question that I did have was, as it is now, the curb cut that's really close to Zinni Avenue is not, probably not permitted by distance. You know what I mean? I, it, it doesn't really show it here, but it, look, it appears that that is like a, and maybe the applicant wants to address this. It's, it's a one way is how it, it seems to be set up right now. So you enter off of Herman and you exit off of Xenia. That's correct. So I'm wondering if, are you going to have drop off at the door or can you pull into the lot and perpendicular park and go back out one curb cut? Correct, you can. Um, you can do either or. Would it be desirable? It would, in in our zoning, it would be desirable to not have a curb cut that's that close to an intersection of two roads because it's considered a traffic hazard. You know, if you have somebody coming in and somebody pulling out, it's really too close from what we even provide. I think of, I don't know what that distance is, but it's. Isn't it supposed to be 20 feet? We don't, we didn't, we just now added driveway standards. Um, so, 
Uh, I can't tell you exactly, but he's, his point yeah. is well taken because, you know. I know, but there's also some parking on the Zinni Avenue site. There's two spaces. That curb cut oh. allows access to OK. Mm -hmm. There's one handicap and one regular parking oh. space over there. Hi, everybody. Hi. So I think that would really screw things up trying to get people across the front. Yeah. Line. Oh, yeah, no, I agree with that. Well, then the question becomes, if the practice is reduced a little bit, do you need all that parking? Can you turn it back into some green space? Mm. I, will, I, I will say what every restaurant Can you to come up to if the, I'd rather the, keep please. the parking? Because <laughs> I, I, oh. I, I would just say, Ted, like every restaurant owner says, you hope you never you have never have enough parking so i like to just leave it as it is okay right. and your name for the yeah record, please. oh roger beal okay you know it, you've got a good point because you know there's going to be a fire station across the street from that property and well you know i mean our the intent of the new code is to try to work with less parking requirements, increase the green space requirements. Um, that lot is just beautiful. I mean, you know, the, the landscaping is, you know, really gorgeous. I would love to see it expanded if possible. You know, if it's a burden, financial burden on you or you need those two parking spaces, you know, that's a different issue. You know, we, I think we're grandfathered into that. But, you know, it would certainly be something that, you know, I mean, at least in my purview, it's it would be advantageous to eliminate that curb cut. Would um, would it be? I mean, even if you painted the lot, you know, the arrows again, it seems like it would be hard from Xenia Avenue, Avenue to know that that's not an entrance. If that's the way that the one way goes, um, maybe like signs are should happen. Um, um to do, like do not enter or yeah correct. like so, exit only signs there because i can imagine you know like if you're on zenian avenue and you miss herman and you're trying to turn left into that that would really cause problems at that intersection um if it wasn't noticed properly to be exit only um i've definitely driven in there the wrong way while it's been <laughs> empty um so and and she would need a sign permit for that yeah okay. can you check the parking ratio to today's code to what's there Is yeah i mean she's got more than enough parking she doesn't really i mean she's literally going to have maybe two clients at a time if she has some massage therapist there and she's doing acupuncture it's just not going to be well, well maybe could, people waiting though yeah. could i just state one yeah. of the reasons why i'm at, i am doing this is so i can expand to see more people so i'll probably have about four people or short a time um within an hour so it could, I'd rather keep them. And yeah. if you look at the corner, it's a beautiful lush vegetation that just really sets the backdrop for that area as you come into Yellow Springs. And it was one of the things that attracted me to the building, so. Well, eliminating that curb cut would just enhance more landscaping opportunities. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's not exactly the comment you want to make. <laughs> well, it's, pra <laughs> it's practical to put an exit at an um, exit only sign that is definitely doable and i could imagine maybe you'd offer a small class or something i mean there could be reasons that you would want to have that parking i would think right right thank you you know i mean i think we're you know in my point it it goes back to the same thing you know of uh, we have opportunities to be more environmentally friendly we have a new code that's written around that uh, we have an application to repurpose building that's heavy on parking you know and so yeah it, to grandfather it in is and, and i'm not saying that i'm going to say that that's a condition i'm just mm -hmm. using this as a, a discussion point for a planning commission to consider because mm -hmm. you know at what point do we start to enforce these more green met 
methods if we don't do it in a case where we really got that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to burden, you know, don't get me wrong. I don't want, I, that's not the point of this, but it, it's problematic to me if we just rubber stamp things without taking a hazard. I think it's, it's really a hazard where it is. So. So, so Ted, I just want to see if I understand. In this particular case, you're saying if they eliminated the curb cut on Xenia Avenue, then people would come in, enter and exit off of Herman Street. Yeah. Is that what you're Yeah, I wish there was a site the, the, plan. Yeah, there's no, can't really tell. I don't know if I can pull that up, because I, I'm going to, I would have to see it better. The overhead map yeah, there's an overhead map. I mean, you should have an overhead map in your, no. oh, was that the Exhibit B that didn't copy? It's right there. Yeah. It's in the, it's in the, okay. Is it in our um, packet on, in it's the, in the uh, online packet, can you? show that yeah there you go okay so oh I see and I just put those little arrows to show that when I went out there and looked at it that 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 there was a faded faded arrow that was showing that that was an exit but there isn't any signage that says that and I pulled into the exit yeah. yeah. It does seem farther away from yeah. from the corner yeah, than I went, imagined yeah, it it to remember. Where that white block is, is it the Yeah, that's the yeah. Yeah. cut. Yeah. He takes it back. Yeah, I'm taking it back. <laughs> yeah. I thought I my recollection was that there were two curve cuts on Herman. Oh no 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 yeah. no, no, no. But no, when I see no. that it's on Zenia. Yeah, right. it's yeah, and it sorry I we, we don't know why Never mind. a couple things didn't get in the packet <laughs> there, but well, the other, the other thing too, uh, Ted, to your, your point a little bit is that that's a pretty tight corner on Herman. People are turning quickly off of Xenia Avenue. I don't know that I'd want to further burden the Herman, the Herman Street side. And the I'm, Herman entrance, to be honest, to get out of there, it's a really strange drop yeah. down, wouldn't you say? Like there's a drain and like yeah, yeah. Um, I live right around the corner, so um, okay. <laughs> uh, like I've I've almost crashed my bike like cutting that corner because of the the drop down, burdening that with it in and out and really that's only a one way driveway in front of the building. You would have to eliminate everything to the to the east of the building um, and only have those you know one two three four five maybe parking spots to the west i mean i don't have a problem i you know i was okay. thinking something different so okay yeah so okay. totally apologize so they have yeah the it's all idiot. very no. that's okay you know, well, i didn't get in the packet you know we yeah. didn't know that until today that it wasn't yeah. in the packet because it was on the online but it was in the hard copy mm. so okay and i love the site and the building personally it's actually an industrialized unit yeah mm -hmm. yeah which is something that we talk a lot about what is an industrialized unit. Yeah. This is an industrialized unit. Um, tractor trailer hmm. stuck down on the foundation. <laughs> Do we want to open it? Are we ready to open it up to a public yeah. hearing? Yes. Yeah. You can sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to open the public hearing. Any comments on this conditional use from the public? Uh, hearing none. We'll close the public hearing. Bring it back up here. Any more discussion or a motion? I just wanted to bring up the point that I did ask, um, that I recommended as part of the conditional use that, that parking lot area be restriped, indicate where the parking stalls are, and that um, cur following the, con that are consistent with the zoning code's current uh, length and width requirement. And um, the, that parking lot requires a minimum of one ADA parking stall. Um, 
and that any modification to how they want to do the flow of traffic at any future point would need to come back to the village and there was a previous condition on that property um, that required that landscaping screening of the parking areas from the adjacent residences will be at least four feet high and of a material that will obscure the view year round. And um, right now I think it's, um, it's a fencing material. Four foot wood fence. Four foot wood fence, okay. I'm not, I don't really notice what condition it was in, but that would some, be something that would need to remain. Okay, good. Do you want to add a requirement that the um, entrance and egress signage be clearly marked? You had commented uh, on I, it. I would if I was to make the motion, yes. Okay. Sorry, for some reason I thought we were motioning. <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just pointing out these things that okay. from previous conditions and what I'd like to see happen okay. in this. Okay, I'll make the motion um, to approve with um, the conditions one through five and uh, um, as staff recommends that um, the parking lot be restriped, minimum of one ADA parking uh, shall be dedicated, um, any modification of the current ingress egress be um, approved by the zoning administrator uphold the previous condition that landscaping the landscaping screening um, will obscure the view year-round to the adjacent residences um, any signage will require a sign permit from the zoning office and also that the um, exit and entrance be uh, clearly sign, you know, visibly sign, marked by, from the street. Um, okay. From street Second. and lot? From street and lot, yeah. Second. Okay. Stiles? Yes. Doden? Yes. McQueen? Yes. Donnell? Yes. Tozo? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being patient and getting us through the other. That was the easy one. That is so hard for me to do. Land use plan update. I wanted before um, Ted or uh, Frank uh, said anything. I just um, had Judy Kintner offered to go to that uh, workshop, and I thought maybe she could just give a quick update on what happened with that. Um, I was out of town, wasn't able to make it. So. It it was interesting. The uh, streamlined version was that they are. Everything is moving to a much more online format, much less put in in the kind of booklets that go out. Though there was each each um, sample that was shown had a just a small, very pointed um, printed version, and then the online version was also very concise, but a lot of linked attachments that you could go to. So it made it just easy to look at was not intimidating to approach the zoning codes because they were so accessible and then if you did need the deep dive boom you just clicked on it but you weren't looking at it and being intimidated by this chunk of material so they stressed the the online piece and that kind of accessibility as just the, the direction to go in uh, cautioned heavily against getting statistically bogged down they're like that is just not not your you don't need to do it if, if someone is extremely interested in the statistics that might be pr provided by Green County Regional Planning or some such body, they can access those. But don't put them in your document. And then they showed us what, you know, here's a terrible comprehensive plan. <laughs> it was, you know, about yay thick, and it was very statistic heavy, and it was just not accessible. It, you couldn't easily find the things you might want to find as a 
as a developer, as someone writing a report about a study or, or doing a housing study and wanting to use some of that data, sure, but that's not what it's. But about. they would find that data right. from that's, a different source anyway. So there was a lot of sort of caution against that. And then um, the woman who presented was was really good. And I know that there it was videotaped. So you know some of that stuff is just available in that way. But she talked a little bit about when you put together your RFP, be really careful about what you want. And, and she cautioned that people are always trying to you know, get a dollar's worth of product for 10 cents. You know, make sure that if you need something, that's what you're asking for in your RFP. Don't try to get it later. Uh, clearly, she's coming from the provider end of the spectrum, but that was, she said, just be super clear in your RFP about what you're looking for. And most people get kind of the whole package. But uh, another municipality described something similar to what we had with sort of an OK notion of a comp plan, but really wanting to streamline people with good ideas about what to put in. She said, well, when you get yourself to the point where you're ready for someone to come in and say, give me that, and I'll make it right, that's when you're kind of ready for your, your RFP. But there are, I mean, Denise has, and we got some good connections and resources for just following that path a little further down the road when we're ready. But it made me think, boy, we probably want that provider earlier than we're thinking we do. Because I think just looking at what you're doing, I think, well, you're going way down a lot of paths that that person would go, no, oh, go down that path. Meh, leave it for another document. Leave it as an attachment. So I don't know. We might want to rethink when you want to bring in the consultant. Well, I think that's great because you know, what I did was try to basically take paragraphs, you know, the text paragraphs and put them into the new index. And the, it, it works up until you get to the policy statements. Mm. And then those just muddy the whole thing up. And, you know, so I'm, I, and I, I have just gotten really, really busy. So I haven't done anything other than to cut and paste. And it's a mess. Right, yeah. as it is. So I would, you know, first off, I, I totally agree that I think it could be condensed down in lieu of the index that we came up with, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. But to condense that down to something that's recommended to do, you know, I think that's really a good idea. And and it would streamline, you know, the, you know we're wordy in the So our, you know, our comprehensive plan is mm -hmm. just wordy. And I don't think that's necessary at all. I would love to take, you know, give, I see that the index is like a checklist of things that we want to make sure have content to, mm -hmm. and, and if it's content that can be linked, oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah. But oh my gosh, I would love to get out of heaven to try to do what I'm doing, because it's not working. Well, and then the, the whole price tag picture. You know, I think the council approved. Eight or nine thousand, something like that. I mean, if you wait <laughs> and you get in next year's budget as well and get closer to a thirty thousand dollar mark you're looking at not having to do a whole lot of it other than support that individual Provide with i mean they'll rich. come in and do uh the feedback sessions with the public gather that kind of information which you want an outside entity to do it's just for a cleaner kind of cleaner set of feedback and and just start doing that working with a, a committee to get that thing put together. I, I don't know, it's it's a planning commission thing to think about. Do you want to wait, get more funding for this and, and do it and in a really much more streamlined way? could be until then is make more decisions about that content and where we want that content to be. And then the pro would come in and sort it all out for us according to our desires. Yeah, I mean, I think if you, it's kind of like if you throw everything on the table and say, well, here are all the things we, we, that are important to us as a community that we want a developer to know, that we need them to know about housing right now, that we need them to know. Throw it all on the table as a group, get that as comprehensive as possible, and then bring in your consultant and say, help, this is really unwieldy. That's what they do. Well, and we don't have the expertise to do the linkage anyway, right. you know, mm -hmm. to put it in an electronic form. I mean, that, that ain't gonna happen. And we're waiting on the um, the 
sort of computerization of all of our um, infrastructure stuff too that's happening now, correct? GIS, so yeah. yeah, that's that's going on now. I mean, so you know, <laughs> being able to incorporate that, and mm -hmm. you know, there's all these things that they're, are sort of going on that. right now location that we want to manhole include. So I don't think it would be bad to wait. And, and ultimately, that's a good argument for making it more of an electronic document because it's so much easier to yeah. add future stuff to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we wouldn't even be done in January anyway. <laughs> Well, if we, if we want to talk about budgeting, now is a good time to do that for 2019. So, is that something you would want to ask council? Yes. That's okay. If you wouldn't mind. Um, well, I, we, well, we the eight or no, the eight or nine that we received, you ten, asked. I think we set aside. I thought we set aside I don't ten. Remember, I thought it was like eight or nine. But anyway, it, it was through. Um, it was because you had some leftover money for Forty. the commissions. I thought. No, At I think time. we just said we probably were going to need someone to work with us. Let's set aside ten thousand dollars. No, it, it did. It did but come out of board. Not, none of it. it's been used, has it? No, none of it's been used. So, but I don't but know that it hasn't been eaten away a, a bit. Well, it may have, but I mean, yeah. this would be a new site. Yeah, I think I think when it was presented, it was taken out of board and commission at the time. But I don't know. If I yeah, that well could have been, but it hasn't been used. Yeah, so it, so we're say, you're saying Kevin, it's, it, it can I can almost go under a capital improvement. It, it, it's, I mean that's what you're basically doing is assisting in uh, infrastructure upgrade. All sorts of things are going to be informed by that comprehensive land use plan. I think a good case could be made for. I don't think under. we have a problem about making a case. I just want to know what would be the reasonable amount to. Well, that I know City of Bellbrook, uh, you said Melissa Dodd was at that yep, meeting, yep. and she's paying Green County Regional Planning like 25 Yeah, what she also said, do not do not and do not employ Green County Regional Planning. She was very unhappy. Okay, so that's probably, they're probably not doing because Not because they're slack in any way, but because they're very statistic heavy and not, not just not into that very quick, so do we um, want to say link, kind thirty thousand or twenty five thousand? Thirty thousand. Yeah, yeah, I would say. Especially okay. if you're doing, but you know, you think about the electronic version now. The, how great that's going to be in the future as stuff gets updated. You know, we'll yeah. be able to put the link in for the for as as GIS finishes the locations of electric poles yeah. and and the other layers. Denise, we can probably get pretty close if we get hold of the Tip City folks. Because yeah. they brought their person in fairly early. Do they have so. an electronic version of that? So the woman that Tip spoke City? was the Tip City person. Oh, that's who, yeah, yeah, that's who they employed as their consultant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can ask. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I will find that out. So. Thank you so much for going to that. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, do we have new business? Um, well, uh, you know, it's funny if we if if we are switch our emphasis from trying to update the comprehensive plan to getting basically getting documentation of things and highlighting things. This alley discussion really needs to fit into that. Yeah, yeah we got it under agenda planning. You know, so, yeah. because there's, I think that there's a whole the, when the electric. Stuff I thought we had it under comprehensive land use plan. Yeah, uh, that's where I said we should discuss oh, it. I just put it so under agenda planning. No, it's okay. Plan eight, um, active transportation. I yeah. I agree. It seems like it just that is a thing that needs to be included in the comprehensive land use plan. Yeah, would would planning commission like to have um, the public works director come and make a presentation on the infrastructure like he did for council? I mean, would you like to get an idea of what is on his horizon? I didn't get well, to go to that I meeting. That would be very so good. Yes. Yes. I, I would like to do that because something else I think needs to come to planning commission and we need to decide how is if if we, whoever 
plan commission council, the housing advisory board, if we agree that we want to create a sort of master plan for housing, and by that I mean, okay, we have goals of how much types of housing, and we think this kind of housing should go here and this kind should go here, and we have, and Karen Wintrow and I have, have a real rough thing of where land is available, then we, we need to be looking at, we need to be making those decisions. And it seems like planning commission is the body to make those decisions and needs to know what, how the infrastructure is. I mean, if the infrastructure yeah. can support, um, I, I'll just throw this out. If the infrastructure could support housing on Stafford Street where the t twin coach apartments are. I think that's Stafford Street. Uh, Not union, that he's in union. union and Stafford. Yeah. Um, then you know that could be, and and the owner were willing to sell. I mean, there are these things. Um, you know, then then perhaps planning commission would say, you know, this would be a really good site for maybe townhouses for seniors or whatever. I'm just totally making that up. Mm -hmm. But sort of looking at, and and so like. Seniors are probably going to be wanting to be closer to town. Families wanting more yard space. So look at that as well as where the infrastructure exists, where it needs to be repaired. So we can start looking at a timeline for everything else being equal, starting to think of putting housing here because things are ready and we have to wait for in this property. Like we have to wait on a glass farm, but you have to extend utilities and have a plan and everything. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think the Planning Commission's role would be to take areas that are potential development sites and designate a land use to them. RC, yeah. RV, RA, whatever. And that's the extent of what our responsibility is. We wouldn't go to the extent of saying that it should be affordable seniors or any of those other things. But I mean, if we had a good well, idea yeah. about the infrastructure, we could say things like if this were to be developed, it would need to have this kind of road or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, but that goes yeah. along with the land use designation because the land use designation is a density yeah. application to that site. You know, yeah. an RC is denser than RV or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that, you know, I think that the, the type of housing, if you want to say, you know, it's, it's for seniors or affordable, those are policy decisions by council. They're not a zoning decision. I mean, ours is planning and density and infrastructure. That's our job. Well, that might be a sort of iterative process because if, if council says, we know that we want to build 100 units for seniors, and whatever the, and so we'd like to know where the place that, uh, units for seniors where there's no need to, for yard maintenance, <laughs> you know. So there might be some places that are, you know, we're not probably gonna stick it out on the glass farm, for example. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, other things being equal. I well, think definitely that could come. Um, I don't know how, I don't, I'm not sure how, when you, I don't know how you do that with private property. I just I'm just asking that question. I don't know. Well, I mean, some, some of it is going to take, yes, a private owner either giving some incentives or, I mean, yeah, they can yeah. say yes or no. But yeah. some private owners do want, like, right. there's a good chance that the schools are, well, I know that there's interest in you having some of the school property be built with housing. Antioch College. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. those are the two main ones. Yeah, yeah right. They're not. Well, I think though we, you know, if you, our zoning map is our land use designated map. So we have every right to change any district or any, any area to fit an update to that map. It doesn't, we don't need owner's consent. We already did it when we rewrote mm -hmm. the zoning code. Yeah, yeah. Um, that in and of itself is the mechanism that we have to use to identify what the desired use of that property is by zoning designation. Now, what we don't do in our zoning code and what planning, I don't think planning commission has the authority to do is designate a user type to a land use designation. 
you know, and, and I don't know how, you know, can we say this is this land we want to be for seniors or I is guess it I'm not be thinking for this has to be for but but as we're looking at the whole village suggesting, I guess. So I I think that um, if council wants to have that conversation, planning commission has a lot to to add about like what Ted's saying. Mm -hmm. um, I think during that discussion, we can have this discussion. Um, so everything that's coming to us, I guess we need to decide how, what it look, what the meeting looks like where we have that discussion, right? Is council asking us to, um, but are we talking about the comprehensive land use plan right now? Are we talking about, you know, the housing board, what is it called? The housing advisory board. The housing advisory board coming in meeting with us at, on a joint board situation. What, what does that look like? Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just was. I mean, I think I think that when you if we put into this comp plan, all that all that the, the vision that we've had, I mean, the vision of the of the in, infill and the studies as a result of the studies that have been done. I mean, that's that's what when this planning when this comp plan is done, that is what a developer is going to want to look at. And they're going to say, wow, this community be really supportive of if, if I decided to do uh, you know senior housing or if I decided they would they would be very supportive of me uh, more densely uh, putting in townhouses because that would fulfill um, a need or apartments that fulfills a need I, I, I think I, I think that's the purpose of that yeah, comprehensive I mean, use plan when you put it out there and you say our goal is this this many units of affordable senior housing and then you've got the, your map attached and you've got your infrastructure links and you've got all of that going on and then the village puts the council puts out perhaps a request for proposals that's that's what's go, that's what somebody goes to to say I'm gonna make a sort of what happened with the fire station you know the folks came in and said well we could put it here for you or here or here here's the upside of here here's the downside of there here's the up and they gave them the proposals about what that would look like on any of those available properties so that Miami Township mm -hmm. was able to consider all of those options and say mm, we like this best so I think that's the piece that the, the comprehensive plan can kind of drive the proposals but then they come to you and say here's what we can do for you on the available properties that we see working for us you know what I mean as opposed to Planning Commission saying here here or here is where you should put your stuff I mean it's indicated, I think, as Ted's saying, in that map. You know, I, I, uh, excuse me, Judy, I, I just pulled up the Tip City uh, Comprehensive Land Use Plan, and, and it addresses exactly what we've been talking about. It has future land uses, mm -hmm. uh, breaks it down, and interestingly enough, in the first sentence, it says the following is a description of the future land use categories identified in the future land use plan map, which is the page before that. So, and, and really all you have is a simple narrative series of declarative sentences that say, this is what we want to do, not burdened by data or anything. Right. It, 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 I'll use the word manifesto. This is the manifesto of what the village wants to do. And <clears throat> when I think about what the village has already done in that process, I mean, you're doing the housing, the, the, the housing needs study, the affordability piece. It seems to me that, that there's a lot of material already that's done. These chapters are complete that you now just have to insert into the book and, and, and structure it the way you want without being burdened with the detail. Agreed. So I think the answer is yes, we would like the utility um, okay. guy to come and do a presentation so, to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just so we yeah. have an understanding of what, what, what our needs are to, yeah. to, to get us. Well and, well, and I think that it could be, you know, I think that it can be a condensed version. Yeah. Um, you know, planning commission needs to hear from staff relative to infrastructure need because that's literally our job you know my charter I mean it's our job so any idea of what you know obviously he could go lengthy in all of the infrastructure needs but what would you what would you like to see come out of it I think that you know I sat through the presentation 
Um, I think the things that are important are utilities, alleys, um, the state of the distribution system for sanitary, water, and electric. Uh, we got new plants. You know, we don't have, we do have some electric distribution issues relative to capacity. Those kinds of things are really important to, to throw out there. Well, for example, what, what Ted brought up when, you know, we're about to talk to Home Inc. on the 18th about their senior housing and whether or not they want to go three stories or not. You know, if he hadn't have had the knowledge that he had about water pressure in that part of the, you know, thought of it, that wouldn't have been brought up at all. And I think that that would be, hopefully someone along the way would have brought that up. Um, but we could have just approved it, not having even thought of that um, for the third story. Um, so I, that as an example of things that could trip us up in the future, yes, that's what I want to hear about. Well, actually, it's, it's good that we're able to bring that to the forefront now because what would have happened is that they would have been stopped in their tracks when they got the Green County building regulations because there's no way. And now they, at least they have the ability to plan for that because it's going to be very expensive for them. I mean, they're actually wanting to do uh, four stories, but they're breaking it out into areas and, and, and it's going to require in, uh, fire suppression systems and things that because we don't have a fire trucks that can reach those levels. So um, they have to have some sort of hydraulic pumping thing for the pump with the, the generator, backup generator. Yeah. Operate. So, and, but, but by bringing that to their attention early on, you know, it'll help them in their budgeting for it. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. And what I'm saying, you know, like uh, uh, fire truck access and stuff like that, like yeah. that kind of thing um, is what I'd like to hear about. You know, if I could put this in the context of what sometimes business people talk about, it's almost as if you want a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in terms of that infrastructure piece. <coughs> Clearly, there's some strengths. We know we've got a new water plant. We've got some weaknesses in the infrastructure. And then there's some threats that Johnny certainly would know. So I think maybe if you put it in that yeah. context, yeah. that might be a framework for the mm -hmm. discussion. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you want to say anything about the 18th or the 12th of November, the 18th of October or the 12th of November? Um, 18th of October is just a um, work session with Home Inc. Um, just to uh, review for the preliminary um, application uh, here, public hearing that will come up November 12th. Are we going so, to sit around a table with them? Or are we going to sit up here? It, I mean, the way that council sets up the work sessions, I think it works well. It's just a large table in the middle. Everyone sits around the circle. In fact, you could probably just fit in the art room. Are we going to um, have it videotaped? Because I don't think we Spencer can up. get here. Well, that's <laughs> We're there. We can set okay. up a camera and okay. tape it. And just tape it. OK. So it's going to be in the art room? We could. I mean, we no. fit, I think. I hate that room. Okay, no, Ted says. Oh, no, I do. So. I just um, think that's the most unproductive, unimagined. It's just like, let's go to a prison cell. You know? Okay, just get here a little <laughs> early so we can So call the tables. 18th is a Thursday, so there's no mayor's court. There's no mayor's court. Correct. Okay, so there's no mayor's court, so we could meet in here. And it's from 1 to 3. I won't be there because yeah, I'm re keeping myself from. Okay, yeah. all right. So I should be at the November meeting, but just uh, sit in the audience when that is going on. Is that correct? You don't have to even attend. Well, the November, the November 12th November meeting was a regular meeting of, yeah. of organized weather attend. stuff. Oh, but just come out for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so, yeah. And then November 12th <coughs> will actually be the public hearing, um, which will review the site plan. Um, thus far, uh, this, you know, this is the preliminary application. They're going to have to come back later for the final, which will, you know, 
be much more detail, but we're pretty much getting a lot of information at, at, at the front end anyway. So, um, and if Johnny's at this meeting, he can probably talk to some of that as well. And um, <clears throat> let's see, there's um, after that November 12th meeting, then it has to go on to um, council. Um, because it has to be um, publicly noticed 20 days ahead instead of 10, um, it will only be able to go to, um, it has to be pushed to December 3rd for the first reading, December 17th for the second reading. But that, you know, if it goes that far, it'll get, that'll get them in, in time for their um, application, which is, I think, at the beginning of February. So, all right, and that's all I have. Motion to adjourn. Yes, I'll do that. Second. Good meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> I know, you can't. So, see, can't see October 18th, 1 o'clock. Make it.